Right here, Dr. Eric San Juan, Mali Tangan Sotel Reverend, every Friday po. Uh, we'd like to ask everyone to stand up for our prayer with Bishop Jess Basco. Maraming, maraming maraming salamat po, Ama. Dahil sa sandaling ito ay hindi kinabayan, ipon-ipon sa isang lugar na pag-uusap po ang kumagiyan sa aming bayan. Amang banal, maraming maraming salamat po at iligtas mo lahat ang bawat Pilipino na kanasada. Ma, sana po'y narito ka sa sandali ng talakayan upang hindi po kong paunawad ang damdamin ng bawat isa. Ang lahat po ng mga government officials at dating government officials, hawakan mo po ang kanilang balik at paspasan po upang ang kanilang layo ni makatulong sa bayan ay magtagumpay. At higit sa lahat na ang mamahayag ng aming bansa. Nagsisibing katulong na ngayong pamahal ng pahayag ang katotohanan. Sana ikaw ba mo sa mga sandaling ito at bigay mo sa kanda. Ang katotohanan lamang ang siyang magtatagumpay sa pagbalita. Salamat na pa. Ama, misa mo pang patunayan na ikaw ay narito. Sang saglit po, hawakan mo ang balikat ng bawat isa sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ama, at umasa po kayo na kami maglilingkod lagi sa pangalan ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sid. Maraming salamat po. Okay, magandang umaga mo muli. At uh, syempre, pakilala mo na yung ating kapatid. <coughs> Uh, again, thank you. Thank you sa lahat na dumating dito ngayon sa balitaan sa Hotel Rembrandt. And salamat po sa mga guests na pumunta. Nakaka-touch uh, uh, dahil nakikita uh, natin na uh, lahat kayo ay eh, merong common goal, same as our goal, which is to make sure that Eric Sanon's job is 100% completed for this year. So salamat po, Julie. Uh, Okay, karami salamat ni Jay. Uh, mga kaibigan, lagi niyong iisipin na marami po tayong mga tinawagan, marami tayong tinitext, marami tayong sinusulatan. Pero actually, napakahirap po talaga mag-invite ng guests. Kaya kung, uh, kung inyo pong mamarapatin, ay uh, bahala na po kayo na kumunawa sa ating mga nagampanan ngayong araw na ito. Pero nagsusumit ka po tayo na uh, patuloy tayong makakapag-imbita linggo-linggo. Kung meron, mga, meron kayong mga suggestion na inyo rin po mga bisita, uh, let me know lang po, i-text lang po ninyo sa akin. At uh, depende po sa mga sitwasyon natin, depende rin sa topic na mapag-uusapan natin. Ngayong araw na ito, uh, it's a great opportunity to have again no? another uh, grandson of our national hero. Uh, he is the chairman of People's Volunteer Against Illegal Drug. The, uh, the essence of this issue is very much important to our current issue today. And we know that uh, everybody, whether it's from the uh, former government or from the current government, we have to follow the rules and regulations. But we have here... Uh, the pride of Balitaan, let's welcome Colonel Rodrigo Bonifacio. Thank you, Mimi. Uh, Morning, sir. Maraming pride ng Balitaan, lalong-lalo na ang talakayan dito sa Rembrandt. At uh, siyempre, of course, nandiyan ka, si Cuyado. Uh, at ang, uh, ating, uh, ang anak ng ating uh, yumaong uh, kaibigan, uh, si Brother Dr. Eric. Uh, magandang umaga po sa kanilang uh, lahat at uh, lahat ng sumusubay po ay at tumatangkinig ng uh, balitaan dito sa Rembrandt. At lalong lalo na doon sa mga tumatangkinig at sumusuporta sa People's uh, Volunteer Against Illegal Drugs. Uh, again, naririto po uli ako sa inyo, I'm in front of you, uh, of course, uh, promoting uh, our advocacy. Uh, our fight against illegal drugs, uh, our commitment uh, to this nation to completely emancipate uh, our uh, country from the evil of illegal drugs by 2020. That is in accordance with the, the uh, National Anti-Drug uh, Plan of Actions of 2015 and 2020. So yung po yung target ng uh, Plan of Action na yun. 
But recently, uh, as we have a uh, close coordination with the Dangerous Drugs Board, uh, we attended the recent advisory, uh, the media advisory, and uh, we, we've learned so much. Uh, of course, there are uh, some additional points there, but uh, practically, uh, they are still uh, uh, promoting the three prone approaches of uh, uh, the anti-drug plan of action which is uh, the drug supply, uh, the reduction of demand, reduction of supply. Uh, actually, kung titignan natin, uh, iisa lang yun dun sa first approach. But in this particular media advisory, uh, hinapi nila sa dalawa. But these are primarily function of the law enforcement unit. Yung pangalawang approach dito, yung tinatawag na uh, alternative or uh, alternative development reform campaign program. Ito yung mga livelihood project na isinusulong ng ating pamahalaan at ng mga non-government organizations to help those drug dependents and those farmers uh, planting marijuana in the country sites. Kasi ang katwiran nila, they, they were, they were uh, telling the government among, the, among others that hindi na maabot ng pamahalaan yung countryside. Kaya ganun na nagtatanim na lang daw sila ng marijuana. In that case, itong Dangerous Drugs Board is composed of several councils representing the government line agencies. Uh, I think uh, if we may uh, suggest uh, among the councils right now, we have to include uh, DAR or the Department of Agriculture. Kasi yung planting marijuana, uh, nagiging livelihood yan ng, uh, ng mga tagabundok. Pero bawal po yun. Bawal po yun. Kaya ako gagawa tayo ng alternatibo. But don't worry, we, we have a very uh, explosive discussion uh, perhaps after this. And that is uh, the, the thing that we are actually supporting, the legalization of medicinal marijuana. For this morning, I would like to give, uh, uh, of course, in addition to uh, the third, uh, the, the second approach, is of course our participation, the people empowerment. Because without our participation, our campaign against illegal drugs will not prosper. So let's help our government, let's unite and fight illegal drugs to save our nation. Good morning. Thank you very much, Colonel Rodrigo Bonifacio. And now I'd like to give you another aspiring uh, psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. <laughs> Ayan. So, uh, psychiatrist. Friendship. Aspiring. <laughs> Joke lang yan. Anyway, Papi began si Dr. Uh, uh, Rainier Umali po ay isa po sa mga batikang uh, psychiatrist na kung saan mga politicians po ang ilan sa mga naging uh, um, Ewan ko na ko, i-re-reveal niya yun. <laughs> uh, anyway, siguro napaka-importante yung mga sasabihin niya. And this is a very inspiring thought about the psychiatric result of uh, many patients he have. Let's welcome Dr. Rainier Umani. Good morning po sa lahat ng nandirito ng Integrity Group for yes. inviting me. I was invited po to talk to you. Ano rin po ba ang nagiging epekto sa tao o sa pag-iisip ng tao ng mga droga? Basically po, tatato lang yan. Um, the after effect, no? One is mental retardation slash brain damage. Number two is death. And number three is psychosis. If magpapropagate po ang kanilang drug use, yan na po halos tatlong yan ang kahihit ng, ng mga pasyente. Kaya po ako, when I confine my drug, drug dependent patients, I do not confine them sa isang drug rehab. I confine them doon po sa isang private psychiatric hospital where I am connected. Why? Because para makita nila na if you will not stop taking drugs, yan ang babagsaan mo. Because halos po doon sa amin sa private psychiatric hospital, ala, kasi history of drug intake and they are now psychotic and some of them 
uh, confined for a lifetime. Hindi na sila makauwi sa bahay, hindi na sila maka-assimilate sa society, even sa family or sa community. Okay? And I would like to support and fairness advocacy na legalization of marijuana. I teach forens uh, I teach psychiatrists for our, our lady of Fatima, and I always ask my students, what is your concept about legalization of marijuana? Manamin sabi, I don't want because addicted. So, tatanin ko sila, if that is your reason, bakit ang morphine is a medical treat? No? An aesthetic is a medical treat. So, why can't we make it medical treat? But, importante po dyan, ang pag-release pag niya, has to have, ang tatag po namin, S2. Depende sa gobyerno, anong gusto lang. S2 or yellow prescription. That's the highest prescription, prescription po. Eh. Uh, yung yellow prescription. Hindi lahat ng doktor, pero po niya, even ay wala ako. Because I will not apply for that. But I, I'm qualified to have an, a yellow prescription, being a psychiatrist. So, now, Doon sa kernel sa sinasabi niya kanina, advocacy, that's fine. Pero kung sa ako po tatanungin nyo, no? sa kinagantagal ko na pong maharap ng drug abuser, meron pa ang pulang yun eh. Because, again, so, nagtuturo din po ako ng forensic psychiatry sa kapulisan. Kaya tanong po sa kalayan eh, what do you think will happen to our drug problem if in case, if in case, PIDEA, and at that time, not compact, was very successful in the performance of duty. 100%. There are no more drug pushers, there are no more drug lords. What happened to our drug problem? Sabi lang, dog solve. Solve, 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 solve. Fine. Next question. Sino sa inyo hindi pa nakakita o alam what is a, a drug store? Supermarket, grocery store, sari-sari store, paint center, gasoline station, hardware. So alam niyo, ano ba yan? Third question, yung bata nag, nag, nagra-rugby, sa kinuha supply? Drug store. Hardware. 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 See? Because, ang, ang isang nakalibot ang po natin, we, we focus on the illegal, waiting drug pushers. But sa amin po, meron tayong tinatawag na legal, unwitting drug pushers. What are we doing regarding that set, no, sector mm -hmm. ng drug problem? Kaya kung ako po tatanungin nyo, sa, ang dapat po yan ay, ay comprehensive. <laughs> Prevention, rehabilitation, police enforcement, and control and monitoring of legal, unwitting drug users. Kompleto yan, yung kompasin. How? Tsaka na, <laughs> mahaba po yun. No? So I'll cut my talk on that. Thank you. Grabe yung Jay. Marami na yung uh, nabuproblema sa resulta ng kanilang mga drug test. At alam naman natin, medyo mahigpit daw ngayon, lalo na sa mga transport uh, sector, mahigpit yung sa mga driver ngayon. I don't know kung gaano katototo. No? Uh, alam naman, EJ, alam natin na ikaw ay concerned sa yung mga kasingitan, mga millennials. Usually ba, ano ba yung concern mo? Kasi, Pagdating sa mga drug dependent, alam na alam mo kung ano yung mga dapat nilang gawin. Eh, simple lang ang solution doon. Although yung sinabi nga yung yes. sir, uh -huh. eh, you have to have productivity after, after rehabilitation. Yun po ang importante lang. Because anyone that you face with um, this kind of illness, even after being clean, kung wala ka rin gagawin, you end up going to the same thing. It's, it's nothing different to any illness like cancer or anything. After curing it, you got to stay away from it forever, and you got to do something about it. How are you going to do it? You have to do something that's really productive. Yun ang problema natin. Kahit sa mga mahihirap, it's the same thing. Kung sinasabi ninyo na nakakabili ng rugby ng mga batang to, it's the same thing because there's nothing else left to do but roam around the street, and whatever you get from those cars, I mean, you go to the, the hardware and make, make sure you don't go hungry. Yeah, yeah. That's, yun ang problema, yung kahirapan saka wala talagang gano'ng trabaho na sufficient. Kaya yung tungkol sa war on drugs and everything, we're, we're all up for that. Pero kailangan magkaroon ng balance kung saan magkakaroon ng ano, mag-focus uh, o strength kung saan tayo o yung development natin kailangan medyo balance rin kung saan tayo tumutunto. 
Corrigan Gen EJ, and of course, current wood is number one uh, uh, important yeah. for uh, no, for uh, being a responsible parent to our children. That is number one we should do. Never fail to show them love. You know, Correct. Uh, that is gonna it's nothing more than love, actually. Yes. Okay, our next panelist uh, came from Citizens Crime Watch. He's the National Executive Vice President, Head Anti Graft and Corruption Task Force. Let's welcome Jigs L. Magpantay. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Juby, uh, EJ. Magatang umaga po sa ating lahat na dito ngayon. Actually, I was sent by Attorney Villegas, our National Chairman, to represent him to talk about uh, Balangin Gavels. But uh, uh, I, I would admit na ako po ay hindi masyadong, uh, hindi ko masyadong alam yung history ng Balangin Gavels. So it's, siguro it's better to talk about Jingle Bells, di ba? Malapit na po yung Pasko, Merry Christmas po. Now, um, uh, siguro uh, dito na tayo sa uh, pinaka-issue talaga ngayon na nakakapekto sa ating lahat itong War of Marx. Uh, ito po'y tila walang katapusan. But uh, as far as uh, citizens, citizens Crime Watch is concerned, uh, we have uh, uh, submitted and we're going to formally submit it with the DILG and the PIDEA on uh, how we can contribute in the campaign against uh, drugs. And good that uh, Captain Bonifacio here uh, mentioned about uh, people's empowerment. Uh, we forget na kung isang na, na ano natin, na, na nakalimutan natin na yung yung uh, local government units from the smallest uh, unit to sa barangay, hindi natin sila masyadong natatap. That's why um, nag-prepare kami ng isang uh, action plan and they are, uh, as said, we are going to uh, submit this formally for their uh, appreciation and uh, evaluation if, if uh, this will work. But uh, sa aming pong paninuwala, at least ito po ay makakatulong. And um, si uh, Martin Dino, yung pong ating uh, dating barangay captain, na uh, umalis po sa SPMA ay naghihintay po ng kanyang appointment as uh, undersecretary for Barangay Affairs. Siguro uh, this will be the time na may formalize natin yung ating uh, recommendation na ito. And uh, uh, ito po ay uh, topping the, the barangay uh, officials and uh, the local government units in the campaign against uh, drugs. Pero ito po ay uh, we can say na ito po hindi bloody uh, gaya po ng uh, nangyari at uh, uh, nangyayari. Now, um, dito po sa ating, uh, sa ating uh, recommendation, um, yung po isang uh, uh, upon, upon the assumption, sabi ni eh, Martin Tino, ina-announce na po yan sa isang gathering, na upon this assumption, he will issue a memorandum with the approval of the leadership of uh, DILG na lahat ng barangay, barangay in, in, in the entire country, uh, they have to submit their uh, barangay drug situation report. And uh, from there, um, they, they are going to evaluate the, the drug situation in every barangay. Now, dito po sa ating isinabit, uh, uh, upon, upon receiving the, the uh, report coming from the barangay, they have to validate it. And uh, we are suggesting na uh, if the, the situation in a barangay is... Uh, uh, more, more than 50% ang uh, drug affected, uh, we have to file an administrative uh, uh, complaint against the barangay officials for their uh, uh, failure to curtail drug uh, problem in their uh, barangay. Now, if their uh, affected barangay is less than 50%, they will be given uh, 30, uh, 3 months to uh, declare their barangay as uh, drug free. Now, kung paano nila gagawin yun, of course, they have to uh, consult with other anti-drug uh, uh, group uh, with the PDEA, the PNP, and other government entity involved in the barangay in the, in the drug uh, campaign. Now, if, if they fail to declare their barangay as drug free within three months, just the same, all the barangay officials uh, will be charged administratively and they will be replaced by an OIC. And uh, the, once they declare the barangay as uh, drug free, it should be supported with the barangay resolution declaring their barangay as drug free with the uh, confirmation coming from other uh, NGOs uh, actively participating in the campaign. Now, if, if they fail, of course, uh, they will face uh, administrative sanction. Now, 
yung ating LGD, yung ating mayor, kailangan mag-support sa doon. Because within the period of six months, at hindi nila may declare yung municipality in last drug pay, just the same, they will, they, they will be charged administratively and they will be replaced by an OIC. That's why kami po rito, ako, uh, personally, I am supporting the Uh, yung, yung nagka-pupos na magamang tayo ng revolutionary government because siguro this is the time na uh, talagang kailangan maging uh, maging uh, totohanan itong campaign natin. Now, um, doon sa methodology, methodology natin, uh, uh, yung barangay, they have to uh, update, identify their problem areas by, uh, by uh, unit or um, uh, section of their barangay And then after that uh, validation process, yung validation na sa Pidaya na po yan, uh, with the support of other NGOs like the group of uh, Kevlar Bonifacio and uh, the Citizens Crime Watch and all other groups. Now after that, uh, yung barangay nila is uh, they have to organize and mobilize all sectors in the campaign against drugs within three months. As I said, they have to declare it uh, drug free within three months. And uh, uh, after that, meron ng legal action. So we have to Uh, consolidate all our forces para talagang maipakita natin na kung, uh, kung in case na nakapag-declare ka na ng drug free and then meron pa rin dyan, siguro uh, doon na tayo sa ibang uh, level of uh, action na dapat natin uh, gawin. So, um, we, we have uh, prepared this action plan and we are going to formally submit this with the DILG and uh, the PDIA uh, later on. Thank you very much. Good morning po. Thank you. Wow, nakita niyo naman na ang daming nagtutulong-tulong ng mga NGO para maging effective yung gusto nating pagbabago na tinatawag. But then, we always uh, saying that uh, we always hope na maging uh, positive ang result ng mga gawain ito. Anyway, yes, uh, EJ, may dadagdag ka? Alam mo naman, pagdating sa barangay, yun yung start ng uh, ano. Hey, I couldn't agree more kasi ako, what's yes. uh, mga araw na pumunta ako dito na pinapakita ng tatay ko, no? Siguro noong pa niya sinasabi. Oo, oh, no, hindi ka nakikialam, eh. Oo, eh. Oh. Kaso nga, kailangan na natin pakialam mo yan. Yan na lang yan. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yung tungkol sa pakikialam ng barangay, it's, it's actually something na da dapat noong pa man, eh, nagagawa na. Eh. It's a very, very bright idea. Bakit? Sige mo nakakaalam ng intelligence ng barangay kung di yung barangay din. So tama po yung yung yung, yung ganung klaseng diskarte. Eh. Ang dapat na talaga mangyari ay eh, mangyari kung ano siya sabi nila. Kasi kung lahat tayo ay dito mag-uusap ng ganito, ganito dapat na mangyari. Kasi eh. dahil kami to action, well, kahit siguro revolutionary government ang mangyari eh we have the same issue. We just have to commit to whatever we do. Yung ay siya sabi ni Daddy, you have to you have to move your ass. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> Uh, correct. Okay. This time we have to hear some something special, no? Alam nyo, siya kasi naging guest din natin sa Chinoro Valencia Foundation kung saan ako po yung moderator doon. Proud din ako na magkaroon ng isang endorser kasi ang nag-endorse sa kanya yung paboritong scientist ni Kuya Harrison Wan. Let's welcome Father Kate Duncan. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Um, my name is Keith Duncan. I'm actually uh, Keith. Keith Duncan. Keith Duncan. I'm actually an NGO bringing about 400 million U.S. dollars directly to the Philippines. All the issues that are going on right now, particularly the drug war, is caused by political corruption, which causes poverty. That's why you have the drug war going on right now. The international answer is evote.1. This is my primary card here. This is the most powerful testimony in God's name on how to forever get rid of all political corruption. It's called evote.1 and it ties into an international database called urlident.com. What it does, number one, we're going to have the right by law to electronically use a cell phone to vote for every leader. You take a picture of yourself, You enter your international ID, time and location. You can pass the cell phone around, you can go down to the Baranga captain. No more paper in the box. You now go back on the internet and see every one of your votes. No more Kamalek. Kamalek goes away. Step two, once they're elected, we individually tell them number one priorities. 
One baranga might be build a medical center, school, roads. We tell them what to do. Open public database. Three, we control their pay. When they do a wonderful job, we electronically push their pay up so they're highly paid consultants. Consultants, we get rid of the politics. They do a so-so job, we lower their pay. They should be very rich and protected only on what we pay them. Number four is going to cause international war. I promise you, international war if they don't use it. If we electronically vote them in office, we now have the right by law to electronically kick them out of office. By majority, 60 to 70 percent say someone's corrupt or criminal, and you can provide the evidence. We kick them out of office now. No more criminal investigations. No more appointed officials. It will kill the dynasties, particularly in America. The primary reason I'm here is helping to Tarte and your press and everyone go public on this one international database. Now, as far as the drugs are concerned, you get rid of corruption, you're going to be the world's first international heroes of forever getting rid of corruption, which gets rid of your criminal networks. Now, you're going to attract millions of foreigners. I'm asking Americans to abandon the United States and come to God's paradise. That's going to pump billions and trillions of dollars of new money into your economy that stay in your economy. Your people, our people, are going to be earning 50 to 100,000 pesos per month on a website called solutionhousing.com. These are brand new hundreds, if not thousands, of new communities built outside in the province area for small factories, business communities, particularly retirement resorts. This will be the new Florida and the new California for the entire world. It will be God's paradise, and you'll finally be rid of every single one of these problems using simple technology. I'm the patent holder of the original selfie stick from eight years ago. I have a published patent in America. It would have been worth around $500 million by now. But I had a super criminal, a terrorist in America, force me into jail six years ago as a political prisoner like Nelson Mandela. I'm still madder than hell that I can't get anyone, including the USA Embassy, to fly me back to the United States to testify against one of the worst crime families in America. So I'm now here helping the Philippines be international heroes in sequentially, systematically exterminating the crime networks. The best part about URLIDent.com, it's the world's first open public database. It's known as Write Once, Read Public. Each one of you will control what goes into the database. A little bit of information or a lot of information. It's like a super Facebook, super Google. We also put the taxes in here, the contracts, the bids, and the laws. It's the world's first open public society. No secrets, no crimes. And it affects every single one of your agencies. You're going to have the most massive reduction in the size of your government because the government now becomes administrators only. They don't handle the money. Because we all know as soon as the money goes into any politician's hands, they build a new government pyramid. We call it kingdom building. And the money never gets back to the people. Now they become highly paid consultants. They do what we tell them to do, or we kick them out of office. No more appointed officials, no more dynasties, no more criminal investigations. If enough people say someone's a crook, 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 and no one supports them as being positive, they go straight to jail. We now bypass the corrupt judges, which will now be elected judges. No more appointed officials, promoted officials around the world. Sufficient. Thank you so much, um, Father Kit Duncan. And now, uh, let's call on the Radio Pilipinas anchor. Ah, wait lang, ipat pause. Right away? After, after, after. Is it okay? Okay, see Okay. So, what's, uh, what's the status now of your situation? You, you want me to be the same? Pure publicity. Pure, pure publicity. I've already been directly to the palace to talk to Duterte. I need a direct appointment with a, with Duterte. 
and with with Harry Roquet. He personally knows me. Almost every one of your agencies in town knows me because I'm the one walking in the door to Comelex, the press, NBI, cybercrime. I'm working directly right now with your military, your military, to provide a new criminal role. They're now going to be the criminal investigators, the fourth arm of the government that doesn't exist now. Your military is now going to be the criminal investigators looking after for political corruption in every other one of the three branches. And because they have their own military court, well, if they commit a crime, they can be put on death row by their own military judges. That's the final step. Thank you so much. May I call on Mom Sandy? Yes, please. that we have still this kind of people in our midst and there is much hope so um, it is so important that we can uh, we can start with the ego that one because that will really uh, make our society uh, excellent excellent thank you yeah. so that's that's not my question, but it is a suggestion. Okay. That let's work on that, the evil that one. That is the key to, um, um, like, if you have heard of Estonia, the, everything there is um, online. And if there are no hands handling so many um, arrangements with government, then there will be little little uh, chance of corruption. So now that we have a good consultant for this, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay, next time, what do they get in a wireless? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> okay, soon. Okay, this day I would like to ask uh, Bishop Jess Basco. To ask questions. Questions. Uh, katanungan po natin ay po Dahil simple lang po ang problema ng ating bansa sa totoo lang. Sa totoo lang po ang kulang sa bawat Pilipino yung respeto sa kapwa at yung disiplina. Kapag ka po naipunla natin sa bawat kapitbahay, sa bawat maliit na barangay, ang respeto sa kapitbahay at ang disiplina, wala na po lahat siya sapagkat mismo ang kapitbahay natin ang silang magtuturo kung sino-sino ang lahat ng gumagamit ng kapitbahay. Kayo po bilang volunteer, ano pong pamaraan ngayon? Kayo po yung voluntary yung uh, ikang ay tumutulong sa sambayan ng Pilipino. Ano pong maganda ng ika nga may may suggest natin sa mga magulang sapagkat kumisa po lagi pong kasanayan ng magulang pag nahuli na ang anak ko hindi gumagawa ng masama, hindi nagdudoga. So, yun, yun po ang sakit ng ating mga sambayan. Masarap uh, magandang pakinggan pero hindi kasinulungan kasinulungan lahat ang sinasabi ng mga magulang. So sa inyo po ng palagay, ano maganda ng gagawin sa ating mga magulang? na sila na dapat ang mag-usa na magbigay sa mga kinawukunan ng kanilang mga anak. Uh, Bishop, tama po kayo. Uh, yung uh, ating uh, bansa ay balot talaga ng uh, politika. Pero sabi ko nga, uh, lahat naman nagsisimula sa tahanan. Uh, our first education begins with our parents. So I think kailangan basic babalik tayo doon. And na nakikita kong nagiging problema, lalong-lalo na sa binapalangkas namin ngayong uh, programa on preventive education, is to give weight more on values. 
yung value formation. So, alam nyo, uh, mamaya siguro, ipapakita ko sa inyo ito dahil may partnership ang uh, People's Volunteer Against Illegal Drugs with uh, the Great uh, Lighthouse uh, Foundation. Ang title po nito is LIPAD, which means uh, Lighthouse Program Against Dependency. Dito nakasalang at sinasabi dito, yung programa na kung talagang ikaw ay drug dependent, kailangan aminin mo na meron kang pagkakamali. Ganon din sa tahanan. And uh, basically, uh, kagaya ng uh, pinag-uusapan natin kanina, we discuss uh, discipline and we start our good values at home. So, very very essential dito yung parenthood. Dahil sa magulang natin, tayo nakakakita ng magandang gawain at best example. So, I think uh, sa pagpapatakbo ng ating uh, kasalukuyang uh, pamamahala, ay meron ding mga programa na isinusulong ang ating Dangerous Drugs Board. Kasi kung titignan natin ang DDB, bakit tinawag silang Dangerous Drugs Board? It composed of several line agencies, relevant line agencies, particularly Department of Health, Department of Education, uh, for secondary courses, and depart, uh, the CHED, of course, DSWD, uh, all other uh, line agencies relevant and that are tasked with the implementation of Republic Act 9165 and its implementing rules. Yan po. Pero sa hango na rin doon, batay na rin sa ating pag-aaral. Kagaya po nung binanggit ko kanina, uh, meron tayong problema doon sa ating mga kapatid na magsasaka sa Norte. Nabubulit sila sa pagtatanim ng mariwana. Dahil sabi nila, hindi kami abot, hindi kami nakikita ng gobyerno rito, walang sasakyang nakakarating dito. Kaya pinakakakitaan namin yung pagtatanim ng mariwana. Sir, sir, tama po ba? Parang narinig ko yung kanyang sa balita na parang minihintay silang pangako na kabuhayan na hindi nila ibigay kaya pinatitili nila na yun nga ang gawin ng kabuhayan. Sakto, EJ. So, tama yung sinasabi mo. Kaya dito, kailangan iabot ng ating pamahalaan yung kanilang gamay. Mag-outreach tayo dito. Ituro natin sa kanila yung tamang, uh, ano, tamang uh, pagtatrabaho. Uh, hindi natin sila itutul itutulak doon sa paggawa ng mali. <coughs> Lahat, it boils down on values. And values starts at home. So I think uh, ito, ay, ito ay task ng Department of Education at saka ng CHED uh, bilang isang kasapi ng Dangerous Drugs Board. Party po siya ng council. So lahat po ng ito, Bishop, ay pumapasok dun sa tinatawag nating harmonized strategies ng bawat uh, bawat ahensya dahil sa ating mga NGOs kagaya ng ating kasamang si James Magpantay tama yung kanya lahat tayo magtulong-tulong dito pero sabi ko nga lahat tayo may mga ma may mga bright ideas pag samasamahin natin yan pag usapan natin yan isang tabi muna natin ang politika kasi hindi tayo uusad yun po at hindi lang yan, Colonel, gusto ko lang susugan. No? Marami tayong mga ginagamit yung social media sa pag-aaway, sa pagsisiraan. Alam nyo, hindi natin kailangan yung magaling kayo, magaling si ganito. Ang importante, ano yung may aambag ninyo para sa ikaayos ng, ano, ng Pilipinas. Uh, marami kasi mayayabang na tao na gustong ipamuka yung kanilang kagalingan. Pero alamin ninyo ko ano yung natutunan nila, ano yung kanilang naiambag sa bansa. Eh wala ho, puro pagpapasikat lang. Anyway, bago natin bigay si Kuya Ado, nandyan ang isang uh, napakabait na abogado na talaga nga namang uh, hindi na kailangan tawagan dahil sabi ko nga kay Sir, alam mo Sir, very much welcome kayo dito. Kung ano yung pagmamahal na binibigay ni Kuya Eric sa'yo, ganun din kami. Let's welcome, Attorney Al Bitangkol. Columnist ng Manila Times. Wow. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Ako, Morning, sir. Ako po ay nagagalak na palagi po tayo nandito. At kahit na po wala si uh, Doc Eric, tuloy-tuloy eh, pa rin ang balitaan sa Rembrandt. Ito po ang isa sa mga unang uh, media forum na kung saan po tayo ay uh, naging palagay at naging turing na 
tunay na mga kaibigan ng mga nandito. So, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Yeah. At lagi namin inaasahan na si Atty. Al ay may sinusulat sa amin sa balitaan. <laughs> Ayan, sa amin ko yung Eric. Sabi mo sa kanila. Okay. Salamat po sa inyo. Okay, bigyan naman natin ngayon ang masasabi ni Kaado Paglinawan. Siya po kasi ang uh, in-house natin, analyst. Para po sa mga usapin ngayong araw na to, maestro at iba pa ng Radyo Pilipinas. Bigyan ko lang po ng konting background. Last Monday, we attended the press conference of the, the Dangerous Drugs Board. Uh, and uh, there, Colonel uh, General Dionisio Santiago uh, unraveled the new strategy towards uh, confronting the drug problem in the country today. Uh, expanding from uh, the reduction of supply and demand, uh, law enforcement to PIDEA, and basically the Drug Rehabilitation uh, Drug Dangerous Board uh, taking over the broader aspects of the long-term solutions to our everyday illegal drug problems. This would involve uh, what Colonel Bonifacio has identified as a harm, harmonizing <coughs> the different proactive approaches from the viewpoint of education, from the viewpoint of health, from the viewpoint of uh, social welfare, from the viewpoint of almost everything that has something to do with a reevaluation re of the values that confront our society today. Uh, however, there are some members of media who have taken advantage of the situation again to, uh, to uh, pick the, um, the uh, uh, Pick from the details, no? The uh, the thing that would uh, put this whole approach into uh, bad light. Uh, for instance, the discussion has uh, morphed into a discussion on whether the mega drug center in Nueva Ecija is um, a mistake or impractical as the chairman himself has criticized in passing pero yun ang naging balita ng ABS-CBN and uh, pinikap na inquirer and now I guess it's all over the, the columns well what, what is happening to our country right now in the broad strokes is the war on drugs is really a work in progress it's a work in progress and the problem starts when some people look for ironclad, stone cast uh, solutions coming from government. And because government cannot provide all the solutions, they now turn into some kind of a manipulation of public opinion, turning the people against the government. Uh, ito yung appeal ni Juby uh, de Guzman na uh, we should put uh, this whole thing under the proper perspective of a unified community approach, magsama-sama tayo and all that stuff. You know, a country voted for a president who is a mayor from a provincial city in southern Philippines. Among the bevy of candidates that confronted us in the last elections, the country picked a prongdi. Alam po ninyo, gumising na tayo sa realization na eksasperado na po ang ating lipunan sa mga trickle-down, misayanic, megalomaniac governance styles coming from Imperial Manila. Propagated by students coming from exclusive universities like the one I came from, and proselytizing the rest of society that they are the true messiahs that will save the people 
from the very ills that they themselves created. So this is already an eye-opener that our elite and intelligentsia has miserably failed in solving our political and economic. With 10 uh, problems, with 10% of our population controlling our country's resources, which has now, in year 2017, has ended with one-third of our population below the poverty line of $1 to $2 income per day. So, anong suma total? Nandito na po tayo sa edge ng cliff where social ills na ang dinidiscuss natin ngayon. Where before we could have gone into deep political and economic solutions that would lead to the prayer precisely the prevention of these social ills. The drug menace symbolizes the desperation of our people. This is no longer a government issue. This is an issue of every Tomas, huh? Ricardo, and Dirty Harry. <laughs> no? Do you want to confront the problem of... Uh, the pastor here actually mentioned something about... Do you want to confront the problem of illegal drugs within your home? The first, the first circle that will recognize, that ought to recognize the problem of illegal drugs is the family. But in denial, sabi ni Pastor, ang uh, mga pamilya natin, so would you rather want the police crashing into your door, as in Tokham, or the psychiatrist confining you in some private institution? Or would you let him graduate into himself becoming a pusher and perhaps... Yung karaniwang problema ng mga politiko na na-check up mo. Napaayos. Hindi, paano? Hindi, paano? Hindi, paano? Hindi, paano? Sa amin, as far as we are concerned, if possible lang, if possible, if you are going to run for a national office, okay, empty screening, because tignan mo duty mag-apply ka sa gobyerno dyan ito you will understand there's a need for you to have a civil service eligibility ay bakit yung mga nasa national level ay wala maso na yung screening yan ay paano kung masingitan ka ng mesaya ipit ka na dyan So, dapat yun, pwede ba, merong exclusive criteria that you should have undergone, you know, at MP screening, neuropsychiatric evaluation, and pag merong positive, pag positive yun, exclusive. Ayun. Ba't yun si Garnel? Sandali lang, Garnel. In addition, ano, actually, nung umatay ako nung media advisory sa dangerous drugs board, Uh, last uh, October 28. May mga, merong naitanong doon tungkol doon sa mga politicians or those uh, uh, candidates who are going to run uh, this coming elections. And isa sa mga natanong doon, yung qualification, particularly yung involvement doon sa, sa drugs. I think it's about time. Uh, siguro ang tamang sagot doon dahil nakikita naman natin yung patas natin na ang uh, ang COMELEC mismo ang merong kapangyarihan na magtadhana kung ano ang dapat. So, with that, I think uh, COMELEC should consider kung sino-sino yung mga qualified talaga na tumakbo sa darating na hala. Wala pa tayong ganong regulasyon eh. Kasa, kasi ang binapatayan lang ng COMELEC natin yung nakasaad dun sa saligang batas. Kaya kung mapupunan ninyo, hindi lingit sa inyo ito, nagkalat ang balita na si Ganon, uh, protector ng droga, si Ganon nagtutulak, lalong-lalong na yun sa Marawi, yung dating uh, mayor doon, uh, nakuhanan ng ilang kilo ng shabu doon sa kanyang natahanan. O, yung mga Ganon, dapat, uh, dapat uh, bumabalangkas din yung uh, ahensyang concern doon, lalong-lalong na ang ating commission on election. Wow, kita nyo naman ah. Attorney, grabe pala. 
ang COMELEC lang ang pwede magdesisyon. Pero hindi nila lahat nasasaid yung tunay na tao na walang sabit. Di ba, Attorney Al? Uh, maganda yung punto ni Dr. Omari kanina, okay. no? Pero ang sabi ko nga, may marami na nakasingit na hindi na natin po pwede sa lain. Anong tawag ng Pero, psychopathic ba yan? Ang, ang problema diba? kasi natin dito ay yung present natin na constitution, no? na although yung Commission on Elections no, ay may power na magsala ng mga kandidato, no, eh limitado ito sa pagdideklara ng nuisance candidates. Pero yung qualifications, the Commission on Elections cannot set new criteria that is against the Constitution. Kasi sa Constitution na nakasulat, must be able to read and write, no? must be of this age, no? certain positions, no? 40 years or 35 years or 25 years, depending on the position, must be uh, Filipino citizen, no? Tapos, yun gano'n lang, na very basic, na hindi nga sinasabi nung kailangan na kapag tapos ng kolehiyo, hindi sinasabi nung dapat ay mayroong experience in management, ano? Pero, in other laws, no? For example, since nasa tabi ko si Jigs, ano, eh, kaibigan natin si Martin Dino, no? Doon sa SBMA Charter, no? doon sa batas na gumawa ng SBMA, nakasulat doon kung ano ang qualification. Na sinasabi, the chairman should have the following qualifications. Expertise in the field of economics, uh, finance, legal, and so on. Nakasulat. Pero dito sa ating mga elected positions, constitution lang ang nagsasaad. At ayun na doon lang ay ang pagiging isang natural born Filipino citizen, ang edad, di ba? Uh, kailangan marunong magbasa at magsulat, wala na. So, ang COMELEC ay hindi po pwedeng maglagay ng panibagong qualification. Bakit? Ano ang gagawin ng mga kandidato? E di, dadalhin po ito sa Korte Suprema at sabihin, itong regulasyon ng COMELEC ay unconstitutional. This is against the provisions of the Constitution. So, ano ang dapat natin gawin? Ang dapat natin gawin dito, ay amendahan natin ang konstitusyon. Pero, ang number one problem will be the lawmakers. Papalag ba sila na lagyan ng ganito? E eh, baka kalahati ng lawmakers natin ay matanggal o hindi mag-qualify. So, ano ang gagawin natin? People's Initiative. Po, pwede po yan. Through the People's Initiative, magbigay ng isang panibagong ordinansa na sinasabing ang lahat ng kandidato ay ganito ang qualification. And this can be done through a people's initiative at hindi na kailangan pa ng constitutional amendment coming from the House. Okay, dapat pala eh. Kailangan natin pakiusapan ng COMELEC na baguhin yung batas nila. Okay, sir? Yes, Kit? The answer is actually solved by evote.one. This will eliminate campaign contributions because we know when they go in wealthy, they come out super wealthy. This is 100% based upon merit which means you will finally, after all this time, have the most highly qualified people that become our highly paid consultants. Key word, consultant. They're paid to do the job, therefore the best people will go in office, and individually they will be paid very well, highly respected and honored as merit-based, not just because they come from wealthy families. The poorest children, the poorest young people, the young leaders, have no chance at ever becoming a leader because of the political criminal dynasties. And one of the biggest problems in the entire world, we call it the ultimate plague, is cybercrime terrorism. The ability for people to go in the databases to change the information. Number one plague. Uh, one okay. more uh, additional. Uh, this is Robert Merritt. He's, Robert. he's also about to be a most famous inventor. The website, he's actually going to fill in Manila Bay with fresh water. The website, there's one website called Solution Safe Water that will solve your climate change problem and your energy war and get rid of your mining companies. And I'm working directly with Gina Lopez, DENR. That one website is better than a Nobel Peace Prize to forever get rid of the energy wars. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge first our manager from uh, China Bank, <laughs> China Bank uh, Commonwealth. Thank you so much for coming, Mom. Hi, Mom. In love ako Thank you for support. Okay, I'd like to. Yes, you want to ask question? Yeah. Yes, Mom. Okay. Um, use the microphone, please. I'm just 
curious about the evil of that one. Is there any country that is using that now? The answer is no, and the reason is because of the massive political corruption that exists. They're literally going to scream bloody murder when they understand that we can vote them in and now we can vote them out, therefore bypassing criminal investigations and finger pointing. That's where the people spend most of their time is in criminal investigations and congressional hearings. This eliminates it. Massive reduction in the size of your government. You have about a government that's about 10% the size of your current criminal dynasties. And we, you could even use the word terrorism. The definition of a terrorist is anyone who perverts or changes a government or agency out of fear and intimidation for personal, political, or private gain. That's the definition of a terrorist. Okay, we still have a question. Yes, Mom? Yes, ma'am. From NEP25. Uh, Um, na po yung uh, election 2019 elections, di ba po yung address? Uh, Ano po yung hindi namin mayroong gano'n? At the very least, sa mga yung personality disorder, I cannot say they are psychotic. But at the very least, sa mga ibang manifestation, manifestation of psychiatry, ah, personality disorder. Ayaw. So, paano po natin may iwasan yung uh, this upcoming election po kung hindi naman natin pwedeng basta-basta baguhin yung uh, yeah, uh, sinasahin? Yan ang masakit. We cannot. That's a reality. We cannot prevent at this time. Uh, sa akin, I feel like it was. Okay. Kaya sana ngayon may people's initiative na kung may ahabol niya for 2019, so much to be better. Well, uh, I have an orthodox uh, view. Ah... Uh, Without you knowing, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm an advocate of REPCO. We, we know for a fact the problem natin dito is discipline, our social awareness, uh, revolutionary government <coughs> under President Duterte. The only way we could uh, move for this change is to have uh, one common direction through revolutionary government. I know this is debatable, but once the people decide, everybody will follow. There are sets of uh, guidelines uh, being uh, discussed in the different forums. And uh, na I monitor ko lahat yun. And I for one, the people's volunteer against illegal drugs, support the advocacy. So kung gusto natin mabago yan, Hanap pa tayo ng people's initiative. Matagal yan. Pag-uusapan pa yan. Pero kung RevCov lang yan, kailangan natin ng Pangulo natin. Okay. Lagi po natin tatanda na ang balitaan po ay walang kinikilingan. Wala akong personalan. At ito po ay para sa lahat. Hindi. Nire-remind ko lang po kayo na kahit po sa kabilang panig, ay dapat din natin pakinggan. Oh, wala ho tayong kinakabay. Kasi ang balitaan ko, nabuo to para sa lahat po talaga. Kaya kung ano man po yung mga opinion ninyo, very much welcome. Kuya Camilo. Uh, good morning. Morning, sir. I'd like to stress on the point of Dr. Romadi, no? Niraise niya yung, ano, niraise niya yung punto na ang eyes natin are just towards uh, the regular sources of illegal drugs, no? He raised one point which uh, can be considered that is uh, the unwitting legal sources of drugs. And uh, I would like to request our chairman of uh, the People's Volunteer Against Illegal Drugs to consider that point. And in addition to that, I would like to 
ask our chairman if, if it is possible that we uh, invite a psychiatrist like uh, Dr. Rainier Omali in our group. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother uh, Camilo. For your information, Brother Camilo here is uh, one of the director of the People's Volunteer Against Legal Crime Stop. And uh, we welcome you uh, in our uh, group. Of course, uh, a personality like you uh, will help a lot uh, educate our uh, uh, our nababayans, especially uh, the Filipino families. Maraming apektado kailangan babaan natin sila tulungan natin sila, uh, ipakita natin sa, sa kanila kung ano yung uh, uh, naidudulot at uh, kasamaan ng uh, nagbabawal na gawa. At, Colonel, hindi ito sa kaalaman ng mga tao na sa aming pong punto, pag ang isang tao ay drug user na, in under rehabilitation, we have to understand po, number one, babawal sa class, uyat tabi po ito. Drugs, alcohol, Coffee, tea, chocolate, soft drinks, bawal. Coffee, yeah. Coffee, tea, soft drinks, chocolate, bawal. Stimulant. Stimulant. Because, mamu problema po kayo yun. Pabalik balik, especially po if the drug user already has what we call a psychopathology. You know, meron na siya mental illness. It confounds the problem. Kaya po, palagi din niya, kasama po eh, sa rehabilitation ng family therapy. Maintindihan ng mga magulang, ano ba ang nangyari sa anak? Kaya po ako, pag mag-confine, mag iba pa po yun. Pag-confine ako ng, ano, ng producer, asabi ko, tatanoy ko yung magulang. So you expect that your son should change? Yes, look. Change for the better. Yes, no. Okay. Second question. Can I expect you to change? Yan. Pampak pa palik yun eh. Pero pag tinanong ko, sa tingin niyo po ba ano ang dahilan na naging adik ang anak niyo? Ay, puta do. Dahil niya sa mga barkada. It's very, very common po yan na nai-encounter namin. So ang itin niyo po sabihin, kung i-confine ko ngayon yung anak niyo sa isang kubeta, lagyan ko yan ng isang kilong mariwana, hindi niya titirahin yung mariwa. Ay, titirahin din po. O, nasa niyo pa? Ito ng barkada. Because the factor of barkada is just a catalyst sa nangyari problema sa anak mo. You know? You have to understand ano ho ba ang dynamics bakit ang tao ay nagiging ating. You know, misa niya lang hindi ho natin na-address eh. And then, you know, in my experience, number one cause po yan ng drug abuse is poor family relationship. Number one po yan. Basic po yan. Now, minsan, ay isang isang pag ano yan, komplikasyon eh. Ikaw na magulang, ang tingin mo na ibigay mo na lahat yung gusto ng anak mo. You have given everything to your, to your child, to children. But what they don't realize is that delivery was, that did, have, did it have a positive effect or a negative effect on the child? Marami pong drug user. Tignan niyo ang family dynamics yan. Ano yun? Spoiled. Spoiled ng, 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 ng magulang yan. Yeah. Because, nagsisimula po yan pagkabata pa lang eh. Especially problema po yan ng mga working mothers. Kaya, meron po kami advocacy. We teach na proper child care, proper parenting. Basta naman sa problema po yan. Pero, usually matataas na yung problema yan eh. Ang sa akin, paano po, ibang kung walang proper parenting, nakaproblema tayo. Because palagi po namin in-expound, in what is the most important career in this world that everybody affects us and for, unfortunately, walang iskwilahan to teach them and that is parenting. Kaya po, ang isang in-advocate sana po, magkaroon ng proper parenting subject sa high school pa na ang 4th year hanggang ka-college. Maging mandatory yan. Maganda po, tuturo natin sa mga bata the evils of drug use. Fine! Tama po yan. Pero without proper parenting, useless yan. Because, yun po mga pasyente namin, tanungin mo yan. Yung bang pagdodroga mali o tama? Ano sa tingin niyo po yung sasabot? 
Mali. Ang sasabot po niya, mali. Eh, yun naman pala mali eh. Bakit mo nagagawa? That's the point. Because, doon po papasok yung sinasabi namin, pleasure principle. That whatever is pleasurable, right or wrong, doon ako. Aayos ako. Ang padre ko araw-araw minumura ako. Do you think I will ever get a good relationship with my family? Una ho yan, magkukulong yan sa kwarto. We call that social isolation. Bandang huli. Ha? Na magkikwento sa iyo. Hindi. Hindi yan. Hindi magiging open. Bandang huli yan, lalabas yan. Di ba kaya marami, makikita mo sa history nila. Umuwi yan, madaling araw eh. You know? Pupunta yan sa kumunigad wherein they will feel happy. Basic po yan na drive sa tao. Pleasure principle. And we don't have to be addict to be affected by pleasure principle. Yung alam mong bawal sa yung may antapresyon ka, bawal ang, ang uh, uh, fatty and salty food, kakain ka. Hindi mas masarap. Ang taba-taba mo na, kakain ka ng ice cream, taka, walang kontrol. Diba? So, pleasure principle. Guilty. See? Ang masaklap-lap mo, pag umalis yung anak nyo, at yan ay nabarkada sa drug users, automatic yan. Sigurado po kaya adik yung anak. Okay. Wow, ang dami natin. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. May... Hello po. May Bermuda so from Global News. Question po for Colonel Bonifacio. On uh, on November 13 po, President Donald Trump and uh, US, uh, President Duterte will meet. Their main main agenda is drug uh, drug war. Yung uh, talks po about how to curb illegal drugs. How exactly would you want the president to deal with this problem with President uh, with President Trump's suggestion? Well, uh, I would support, of course, the uh, the meet of uh, the two uh, leaders, and uh, with that, uh, I would like to tell you uh, that aside from uh, the, the pillars that uh, were discussed recently uh, during our media forum with uh, the Dangerous Drugs Board, one additional uh, pillar was included which is international cooperations among those nations advocating uh, uh, the fight against illegal drugs. So dito makikita natin yung exchange of uh, ideas and uh, yun yung collaborations ng dalawang bansa natin. Meron tayong tinatawag ditong uh, law enforcement unit which is under the department of which is under the uh, dangerous drugs for Jupidea. Yan yung uh, enforcing uh, army. In the same manner, sa U.S., meron tayong drug enforcement agency yung U.S. na yan. When I was with the, uh, when I was with the uh, PNP narcotics group before, uh, I've been engaged in the uh, dismantling of these uh, shabu labos. No? And uh, I, I, got some, uh, I got in touch with some uh, counterparts with uh, the U.S. and Australia. So, kailangan natin ng ganung klaseng uh, collaboration. Kasi hindi natin ito kakayanin dito. If I may go back to what uh, transpired recently with this uh, 6.4 billion uh, uh, worth of shabu haul from China, hindi nila ito malalaman. They won't know it without uh, the information sent to us by China. And that is part of collaboration. Pero dapat maging careful tayo doon. Who knows, baka yung 6.4 billion is just only a bone. Doon lang nilalagay, tapos yung malaking value, 6 times the value, babagsak sa ibang port. Remember, we are an archipelagic uh, uh, country. Kahit saan, pwede tayong landingan ng mga ganong uh, smuggled uh, uh, drugs. So, kailangan natin ng uh, kanilang uh, expertise Kailangan natin ng continuous uh, education about uh, law enforcement pertaining to uh, illegal drugs. Isa yan sa makakatulong natin and we go back to the first approach. Demand and Supply Reduction Campaign Program. That's all. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, last question. Uh, last question uh, okay, sir, kasi imimit din po ni President Duterte si Xi Jinping. Sir, paano po kaya niya yun i-deal with him? Kasi sir, di ba, yung 6.4 billion allegedly came from China, sir. 
sa tingin niyo sir, bring up yun ni President Pan? Well, uh, alam mo, pagdating sa ganyan bagay, uh, may mga diplomatic approaches yan. Eh. No? Uh, hindi natin ito, kumbaga sa ano eh, pag nag-meet yung dalawang leaders ng bansa, hindi head on yan. Pinag-uusapan yan on the table. So, there are diplomatic approaches here. Of course, we have sufficient data na ganito ang nangyayari and we know for a fact na yung uh, haul ng uh, drugs papunta dito sa atin came from China. The three triads. Sun Yi, uh, 14K, and the Bamboo Gun. That was disclosed recently by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Administration. So, hindi na nga ngulugan pag upo natin sa table with our president, makikipag-usap siya doon sa presidente, uh, presidente ng China, eh, uh, lahat nagsasabihin niya, eh, okay na. May mga protocol yan, sinusunod yan. Tayo naman, yung intelligence community natin, ini-evaluate siya, ina-analyze yan. Kaya, just like what I uh, stated a while ago, para sa akin, yung 6.4 billion na binagsak dito, pinakain ng China, merong mas malaking value doon. Okay, uh, yes, yes, Bishop? Yes, uh, more? sa pangalan pa rin po ng siyempre ng ating uh, kaibigan, Dr. Eric, it lies nating uh, bigyang halaga itong ating panauhin sa mga sandaling ito. Si Dr. Romani at saka si Ken, eh, siguro po pwede namin i-recommenda lalo sa ating pahayagan ay lalatala natin na sana for recommendation na ako kayo gumawa ng isa na uh, kumuha kayo kapwa ng advertisement na panawagan para po isa lang sa lahat ng dyan, sa lahat ng radyo ng pamahalaan. Siyempre, libre po. Dapat kayo paniniwala po ang sampay ng Pilipino doon sa lalo na si Doktor. Siya magsasabi kung anong dahilan bakit hindi ka dapat gumamit ang droga. Ang kayo po naman ay isang namamahala para makatulong tayo sa pamahalaan sa pagkita po ng isa ng advertisement na magmula sa inyo ibigay sa radyo ng ating pamahalaan para libre. Kayo ang mananawagan. Ito po yung nakita natin dito po sa Friday uh, palitan sa Rembrandt. Siyempre, sa pangalan po rin po ng aming kaibigan na uh, yung mga kong Dr. Eric Sanmo. Thank you. Salamat po. Good suggestion. Okay, Dr. Uh, Attorney Al, for final words. Wait. Sama niyo na yung inyong uh, panawagan. <laughs> uh, bago muna yun. Bago muna yun, Juvie, no? Uh, kasi iguhin muna tayo, no? Kasi puro droga so, no? Punta tayo dun sa uh, transportasyon, no? Particularly sa MRT Sury, no? Uh, noong sa linggo, no, naging laman ng mga pahayagan yung uh, pagbibigay ng notice of termination ng DOTR sa Buri no, para i-terminate ang maintenance ng MRT3. No? At kasabay nito, inilabas ng DOTR ang mga datos sa unloading. Ano po ba yung unloading? Ito pong unloading ay kapag mayroon pong isang tren, ano, tumatakbo at bigla po ito huminto, at hindi na muling nakatakbo kapababain ang mga pasahero. Ito ang tinatawag na unloading. Ini-evaluate ang performance ng MRT3 no? sa number ng unloading. Kung makikita natin, ano, nung simula ng 2010, ano, uh, hawak pa ito ng Sumitomo Corporation, ang number of unloadings ay tumataya sa 344 sa isang buong taon ng 2010. Noong 2011, ito ay tumaas sa 457. Ang um, general manager ng dalawang taon na yun, ano, ay si Honorio Bitasa. So, sumito mo corporation may awak, 457 noong 2011. Noong 2012, no, nung maubo po si Mr. Bitangol bilang uh, general manager ng MRT3, no, bigla po itong bumaba sa 292. Magmula po sa 457, so halos na hati. At pagkatapos po, ano, nung sumunod na taon, ano, Noong 2013, ano, ay bumaba pa rin po ito no? sa bilang na 281 sa pamamuno pa rin po ni Mr. Bitangol. At noong 2014, noong huling taon ng pamamuno ni Mr. Bitangol, ito ay bumaba pa ulit sa 222. Ang nakakataka dito, no, noong 2015, noong maupo na si Mr. Benafe, ay pigla po itong nadoble at umabot ang unloading sa 417 noong buong taon ng 2015. Noong 2016, ito ay umakit na naman, all-time high, no? 586 ang naging unloading. Nitong 2017, pag-upo ni uh, GM Rodolfo Garcia, first half pa lang 200 na. 
So ito, estimated natin by the end of the year ay magiging 500 unloadings to for 2017. So ano po ang makikita natin dito? Noong 2010, 2011, napakataas yan. Noong 2012, 2013, 2014, 2014, bigla po itong bumaba. At noong 2015, 2016, 2017, ay bigla po ulit itong tumaas. Eh, pareho lang naman po ang infrastrukturang nandoon. Pareho ang mga taong gumagawa. So ano po ang naging problema nito? Ang problema po nito ay ang estilo ng pagmamanage ng MRT3. Doon po ang problema at hindi po sa infrastruktura o sa equipment ng MRT3. Okay. Pasensya na kayo. Wala na tayong oras mga kapatid. So, parting words na lang, uh, Sir Jiggs. <laughs> Siguro yung ibang update na lang uh, as uh, head of the CCW Anti-Graphic Corruption Task Force. If you remember, nagpay po tayo ng uh, uh, kaso against uh, former uh, SBMA OIC Administrator um, just uh, around the Escolando. Um, yung mahirap, akala natin yung kulang lang yung pagkaalam sa trabaho ang may problema pa. Pag uh, sobrang naman yung alam, eh nasusobrang din ang kanilang ginagawa. We filed a criminal case against him and uh, uh, just uh, I think two, two or three weeks ago, nag-file po siya, nag-cancel po siya because uh, uh, inyakit po sa kote yung 13 counts of uh, usurpation of uh, authority. And then tayo rin po yung nag-file ng uh, disbarment case against Senator Laila de Lima and uh, we just received a, uh, an information coming from the Supreme Court. Yung po kaso niya ay ipinaba muna sa IBP and then within 90 days, kailangan po iakit ulit sa Supreme Court for uh, final decision. So, parte po yan ang ginagawa ng Citizens Crime Watch as uh, our uh, contribution in the campaign against uh, uh, corruption ng ating pong uh, gobyerno. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, the world famous answer is solutiondrugs.com. The only way to forever get rid of drug abuse is to get rid of the demand. You can never get rid of the supply. The answer happens to be the churches. The website's called Christ Domain. It teaches all the churches to become the education centers to build new industries, particularly solution housing. When our people around the world finally unite together, under one central international database called URLident.com, you'll be able to use your cell phone to identify who's honest and who's a drug dealer. Therefore, there's no more criminal investigations needed. You'll no longer have criminals running around the world with super rich money. All they have to do is buy off a scallywag or a police or a judge. Well, this entire system is a revolutionary single answer that replaces all the existing forms of government, including federalism. Because now we put the control in the hands of the people. All the leaders are now highly paid consultants. It's the key to everything, which is why this has to get on international news. It will cause the biggest sweep of all criminals in the world, because now you can identify who is who with a single face recognition and a single international ID. When this goes happens, it breaks all the barricades down between all the countries. You will now no longer need a passport or a visa. As long as you're honest, you can travel the world on your single international ID. If you're the best person to be governor of California, you want to run a business in India, you can travel anywhere in the world as long as everyone says you're honest. Super Facebook. Thank you very much. Okay, Carnell. Uh, Juby, uh, sa... <laughs> mga nagsusulong ng balitaan talakayan dito sa Rembrandt. Maraming salamat. Bishop, umasa po kayo na ang People's Volunteer Against Illegal Drugs ay uh, magsusulong at hindi titigil sa pagbibigay uh, ng uh, ulat sa ating uh, mga kababayan. Magandang baga po. Thank you so much. Doc? Uh, salamat, Juby, no, for inviting me para makapagsalita mo na ako ng day regarding my, ano, my idea on drug abuse. And Colonel, if you really need my help, it's okay. No problem. Thank you. And thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Pawakas po, uh, pagtatanong lang, hindi naman kailangan sagutin. Una kay Atorgi Bitangkol, alin po sa palagay ninyo, mas mahabang pila sa MRT po ba o sa mga congressman na nakapila papunta kay Tom Kumari? <laughs> Pangalawang tanong kay Pastor Vasco. 
Paano na po ang mga paring katoliko na wala ito si Kaso, kundi kape at rosario? Kaya ito, kaubali naman po, kung buhay kaya si Cory Aquino, tatakbo pa rin si Noynoy. At huli kay Colonel Bonifacio, sa meeting ni Trump at Duterte, ang tanong ni Trump kay Duterte, Did you have a happy childhood? At sagot naman ni Duterte kay Trump, What about Melania? Salamat po. Okay, mga kaibigan. Mula sa aking partner. Hello, partner. Paalam na tayo. Yes, thank you, thank you. Muli na tayo magkita next Friday. And salamat dahil hindiwala kayo na doing vessel tong balitaan sa Lembaro tungkol sa Pagandang Pilipinas. Yan. At siyempre ako po si Jubilee Guzman. Nagpapasalamat kay ako sa lahat. Ah, yes. Sir. Okay. Ano mangyayari ito? Can we turn it over to AJ? AJ? Oo. Tayo mo na. Tayo mo na. Ang CCW po ay nag-launch ng CCW One Para for 2017. And ako yung project director, I will assure you na part of that proceeds will go to that campaign. Ano ba ni Jen now? I suggest na Papa Jan that we turn it over to AJ for safekeeping and for additional receipt, no? If ever there would be some more. Okay, thank you so much for the suggestion. AJ. Can we take a picture? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, mga kaibigan, marami salamat sa lahat ng mga dumalo sa ating Dr. Eric San Juan's Balitaan sa Hotel Rembrandt. Thank you very much and I love you all. Thank you. Picture, picture. Lahat na mag-picture sa... Sir, upo mo na, upo mo na. Ah, uh, upo mo na lahat. Hindi mo na. Ah, na, tingnan mo na. Sige, sige, kayo mo na. Sige, 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 sige. Go, go, go. Yung mga guests natin po lang, para lang. Sir, ah. Big, big. Doc. Ay, attorney. Ah, turn over ka nila yun. Ah. Picture, picture. Ah. Within the giant hall. Ah, that's it. 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 Sa mga nais, mag-donate sa akin. Very much welcome, ho. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mga sige, mag-donate sa balitaan. Pwede rin. Joke, joke, joke. Okay, lagi nyo isipin. Ang balitaan po, nangangailangan din ng ayuda ninyo. Kung meron ko kayong mga kailalang mga gusto mag-sponsor ng ating programa sa Balitaan sa Hotel Rembrandt, huwag ko kayong mag-atubili. Sabihin nyo lang po kay EJ San Juan and everybody is welcome to help. Maraming salamat po.